we've all shown this in time. So congratulations on that. So everyone that has a phone, I need you to first thing. Get your phone out, start a new note. And I want you to say, what am I going to do better? And while you listen to everybody tonight, I want you to say, hey, that's a good idea. I'm going to implement that into my life. Because this isn't just about beating diabetes or losing weight. It's about being a better person. You all tell me you're doing this so I can be there for my grandkids, so that I can hike up that mountain, so I can be better at work. You all have reasons that you're doing this, but let's take it to the next step. Let's take it to the next level. What are the three things you're going to do? And I want you to write them down tonight. So has it been hard for anyone? Raise your hand if it's been hard. It's hard, right? It's hard to change your life and your lifestyle. And we use this term falling off the wagon. <laughs> to err is human, right? We fall off the wagon. All of us have. We've all fallen off the wagon. Now, hopefully it's not this. Not only did I fall off the diet wagon, I dragged it into the woods, set it on fire, and used the insurance money to buy cupcakes. <laughs> so hopefully that wasn't you. But if it was, inevitably, at some point you will fall off the wagon. The difference between those who succeed and those who fail is having the courage to get back on it. That's what, it, that's what we challenge you all to do. Get back on the wagon. The reason why people yo-yo is because they say, well, I gave in and I gave up. It's okay if you give in, but don't give up. Does anyone feel like this sometimes? Everyone has a mountain to climb and to push up. And some of you, no offense, you get this rock. That, you, that you're pushing right to the top, and you see it, and you're like, ah, I can't quite do it. And then you roll back down the mountain a little ways. Some of you I feel sorry for. You get to the top, not only to find out that that was a false, what do they call it, a false peak, you got another one to go up. But I'm gonna challenge you, keep pushing that rock till you get to the top of the hill, and here's the reason why. The people that get to the top of the hill all can attest to this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> this. Once you hit the top, your successes start to snowball down. Your successes might be small at first, but as they get going, as you start getting more energy, as you lose weight, as you start having some more mental clarity, as you start having more confidence in yourself, they start adding on each other. Then you say, oh, I can do this even better. Now I'm moving towards my goals even more. It just keeps going in the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this. We're gonna talk about this. Carbohydrate addiction is real. That's probably the biggest mountain that most of us have to get over. Carb addiction is real, okay? But once we get over it, the snowball starts rolling. Okay. So what are the benefits of this lifestyle? What are the benefits of eating a low-carb, healthy-fat diet? It decreases your total insulin production in your pancreas, and it decreases your insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a disease. It is what causes type 2 diabetes. It is what causes many of the other diseases that are on here. Okay. It causes blood sugar stability. Those of you who wear your glucose monitors on your arms or your tummies, you'll notice, oh, my blood sugar is like this rather than like this. Our bodies love things being stable. We lose stored fat. A switch goes on. Start burning fat for energy. The next thing, it increases our sensation of energy. When we are burning this stored fat, that's actually better energy than what we are eating in carbs by far. OK, 
can't tell you how many people tell me, Doc, <coughs> my joints aren't hurting anymore. I feel like inflammation is out of my body. The, the pain, the stiffness is like melting away. I didn't think I could feel this way anymore. Your mood is better. You think clearer. You sleep better. Your blood pressure goes down. Your triglycerides are go down. Everyone says, ah, I am, I'm eating all this fat. What's gonna happen to my cholesterol panel? It's so fun to say, look at your triglycerides. Your triglycerides were 250, now they're 80. Your good cholesterol, your HDL goes up significantly. It's pretty awesome. It actually increases your lifespan. Studies have shown that your length of life is increased and your quality of life. And then risk of disease decreases risk of heart disease, stroke, even Alzheimer's. And then, of course, overall better quality of life. This is a quote from probably one of the initial docs. He actually was out of Australia and kind of got kicked out of the medical board for practicing low carb. They said, you can't practice medicine anymore. It took him a while to come back. And he said, the low carb, high fat. This is the new medicine, which is going to take 30 years to be accepted. This is about 20 years ago, by the way. But as far as your health is concerned, you better accept it today. You haven't got 30 years to wait for medicine to catch up. You all are being a little rebellious and going against even what standard of care is in the United States by saying we can kick diabetes and put it into remission through lifestyle changes. So did you know that recently the American Diabetes Association actually has said, yes, low carb diet, low carb lifestyle is an option. 14 experts got together and they said, yes, High carb diets to try and increase fiber, vitamins, and sugars, that's not good anymore. They said that low carb and very low carb eating patterns are among the most studied eating patterns for type 2 diabetes. And then it has the benefits as we've already discussed. And then they actually put this in their recommendation. Reducing overall carbohydrate intake for individuals with diabetes has demonstrated the most evidence for improving glycemia, which is blood glucose, and may be applied in a variety of eating patterns that meet individual needs and preferences. So it's there, hidden in a report, but it's there. Has anyone seen this lady before? She's the CEO of the ADA, the American Diabetes Association. And she said, oh, I've got diabetes too. I'm gonna try it. And she's been on the news a lot lately. And she said, I just stopped eating all the sugars and the carbs. She was on insulin, she was on multiple medications, got off all of them. So she has some pretty cool podcasts out there if you wanna look her up, Tracy Brown. Okay, I wanna talk about this word consume. <clears throat> to buy, eat, drink, ingest, use up, or take in for personal use. I want you to ask yourself this question. Why do I consume? Why do I put the things in my mouth that I do? What is my reason? Because there's a reason why every single thing you put in your mouth, there's a reason why you do it. Is it for nourishment? Is it for addiction or craving purposes? Supplements, vitamins, medicines, social bonding? hunger or thirst, enjoyment. You see food, so you eat food. Bad habit or ritual to replenish my losses or for reward. So some of these are good and some of these are bad, right? There's probably other reasons that are yours that are not up here. Nourishment. Am I eating foods that provide my body the things that I need to function? Supplements and vitamins, I'm going to argue, you may not need a ton of those if you're eating the right foods. Medications, we're trying to get rid of a lot of those, aren't we? Addiction or craving. 
Am I doing it because my body is actually telling me, go get that food? Social bonding. There's something that brings people together about eating, isn't there? That's what it's built. It's kind of fun to eat together. And it's even more fun when you eat healthy food together. So I think social bonding, thumbs up, if done correctly. We have cues in our brain and in our gut that tell us you are hungry, you are thirsty. It's okay to follow those cues if, if followed correctly. Reward. <laughs> How many people have rewarded themselves with junk food because, oh, you had a long day at work? Or, oh, you, you did really good on that whatever. You deserve an ice cream or you deserve this. It's really sad, but we're doing it with our kids, aren't we? <laughs> every soccer game, every this, every that. It's your birthday, it's your graduation. Here's crap. Here's diabetes. <laughs> we reward ourselves with unhealthy foods. Enjoyment, eating is fun. Our brains enjoy eating food. And it's surprising, when we start eating healthy foods, it actually gets more enjoyable, in my opinion. What about the bad habit or the ritual nighttime food? I sit down on the couch, turn on the TV, and I eat my blank, my popcorn, my ice cream, my orange, whatever it is. And it's done almost as a habit. You don't even think about it anymore. You just do it. Or the seafood eat food thing. There's a pile of chips there at work or some cookies that you're your son got out, or your wife left out, or whatever. You just grab it and keep walking. Oh, I just ate that thing. I just saw it there, I just put it in my mouth. Um, to replenish losses, that's a good reason. I, I have a long day at work, my body needs, it needs electrolytes, it needs energy. I'm going to restore that. So let's get rid of some of these. Let's get rid of the addiction and craving. Let's get rid of, oh, I can't remember what those were. Get rid of <laughs> bad ones, right? Keep those. They disappear too. Okay. Why do you consume? Change it to just good. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about satiety. Maybe you've heard this word before. It's similar root word as satisfy. It's a sense of fullness, or just, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied right now, derived from the Latin word which means enough. It causes a desire to limit further, further food intake. Hopefully all of you are feeling satiated right now, hopefully you are. And there's actually chemicals and signals in our gut and in our brain that tell us you have enough. Um, now, fiber. When we chew fibrous vegetables and foods, just the act of chewing sends a signal to our brain. Oh, you're getting the good stuff. When we get healthy fats, it signals chemicals in our gut that says you're getting the good stuff. When we, um, there's certain proteins that are higher in certain amino acids that tell our brain, you have enough. Um, eggs, high for satiety. Cottage cheese, high for satiety. If you want to supplement, L-glutamine is high for satiety. When we go into a ketogenic state or a ketosis state, it actually tells our brain, oh, we got fuel burning, we're using it up, and now we're not hungry. That's why some people can fast for days on end when they're in ketosis in a healthy state. And then here's the crazy thing. When you eat high carb, processed carb, high sugar, it actually makes you more hungry. The Mexican restaurants they have it right. What do they put in front of you right when you get there? A bowl of chips. Olive garden. What do they put right in front of you right when you get there? Crap bread. It turns into sugar within minutes. 
and it makes you more hungry, so you'll eat more and order more. They're smart. So if you want to take advantage and leverage the things that are in your brain and in your stomach, oh, please, get some more food. Please, I'm glad you came. Remember to eat these foods to leverage satiety. Fasting is good. A couple other people are going to talk about fasting tonight, but it's good stuff. Okay, gotta have Yoda. I can't do his voice though. I was thinking about you. <laughs> Your veggies are going to be like me. So, some of you, when I see you, I think you're eating a little too much of the fats and the proteins, but not getting enough of the veg. Okay? Veg keeps our gut healthy. You hear the term microbiome, the healthy bacteria in your gut, it keeps it healthy. Veggies actually lower your blood pressure. It reduces the risk of heart attacks, prevents stroke, can even decrease risk of some cancers due to the anti-inflammatory effects. Improves blood sugar stability, keeps your appetite in check, you can improve your eye health, keeps your bowels regulated, and it's best eaten at the beginning of a meal. So again, the chewing of veg and actually the the digesting of vegetables actually tells our brain you're getting what you need. So if you're gonna have a meal, eat your vegetables first. <laughs> okay, this one is so important. I've been learning so much about muscle. So, <clears throat> inside all of our muscle cells is where mitochondria is stored. Most of the mitochondria in our body is in our muscles. Mitochondria produces something called ATP, which is what produces energy, okay? There's a term called sarcopenic obesity. It is what happens when fat starts taking over muscle cells, okay? So you actually have less muscle than you used to, and it's getting taken over by fat. It's a very large problem in our country. And when our muscle mass decreases, or we don't use our muscles enough, it increases insulin resistance like crazy, okay? Our muscles is what uses a lot of sugar, okay? We use the sugar that's floating in our bloodstream, even from the food that we ate tonight, some of it gets turned into sugar that we need. But if we don't use our muscles, our muscles say, I don't need any, I've got enough, and so it stays in the bloodstream. When we start using those muscles, insulin receptors go up, and that blood, or that sugar starts coming out of the blood into the muscle, okay? Like I said, mitochondria is energy. Exercise. We've talked a lot about <coughs> healthy eating and healthy lifestyle and that 80 to 90% of the metabolic stuff comes from what you put in your mouth. But if you wanna get that snowball rolling, you gotta start using your muscles. The biggest muscles, the most important muscles are these guys, your legs, your hip flexors. Going on a walk is one of the easiest and most beneficial things to do. If you can't, do that, even just some air squats or some uh, just sitting up and down or some leg raises or something like that. Do it every day to get those muscles moving. I am a huge fan of both cardio, get your heart rate up, and strength training to build muscle mass because more muscle mass equals more insulin receptors equals less insulin resistance. Okay, many of you have ordered continuous glucose monitors, right? I gotta talk more about them. If I had to pick the ideal situation for everybody, it would be that you would take, have the resources, the money, the time to have a CGM on and a ketone monitor where you're pricking your finger so that you could check your ketones. I believe that the time in target meaning how, the, how much percent of the time your blood sugar is in range 
the goal is 100%, is what will predict reduction of disease, reduction of insulin resistance. And in a non, sorry, in a healthy individual, 70 to 100 is a normal blood sugar range. And that's where they stay most of the time. Most patients will get where they need to be if they can keep every single blood sugar between 80 and 140. We like a bumpy road like this throughout the day. That's normal. Our body will put out a little insulin, then pull out a little glucose all through the day. It's a fine-tuned machine. As you do different things, and as you eat different things, and as you sleep, and as you sit, and as you exercise, our body's amazing how it's got a thermostat built in there. We don't like roller coasters, okay? Our body doesn't like roller coasters. So if you're getting that, that's not good, okay? Um, if you're using your CGM on your phone or on your sensor, look at your daily patterns, look at your graphs. If you're getting a spike every time at 6 p.m., think about it. What is your trigger that made you eat that thing that was high in carbs? Think about why you're doing what you're doing. Another thing, just because you didn't get a big spike doesn't mean it's okay. Watch what happens for the next day. I've had patients say, well, Doc, I had all this food, I had a bunch of carbs, I didn't get a big spike. But if you look at what happened for the next 24 hours, they were high for 24 hours as their body was slowly burning all those carbohydrates. Um, I challenge, if you haven't used one, just try it for two to four weeks so that you can learn how your body responds to what you eat, to your sleep, to stress, to work, to exercise, etc. And a lot of you get frustrated with them. Well, I did too when I was wearing them, but that means you're a rookie, no offense. <laughs> it, it, there, it, it takes some practice, um, it, figuring out where to put it on your body, how to use it, how to make it so it doesn't fall off, how to avoid getting a compression load, those type of things. Be patient, experiment with it. And we're gonna give out some later today. <laughs>